Jennifer from Scrapping the Under the Influence. I am back with a new project using the Country Craft Crea Creations exclusive What's Cooking paper line. This is only available at Country Craft Crea Creations, and I will link that down below in the description of the video. So what I have done is I have made a recipe box, and this recipe box, as you can tell, is pretty big. It is 11 and a half by 10 and a quarter. And the reason it's so big, there's a method. <laughs> there is a reason. But let me just kind of show you the outside of the box. So I've got my title that I've done on here. Um, just a little bit of embellishing because this is meant to be a functional project. So, you know, pulling it in and out, you don't want a ton of embellishments that are going to get messed up, pulling it, you know, in and out of, of shelves or, you know, off the counter or whatever. So it is four inches deep. It's got this little kind of hinged lid on it, matted all the way around. Um, and then inside we have inserts. So the envelopes on the inside, there are six of them. You could get a couple more in here if you wanted to. I actually left space so that you could kind of flip through them. Um, and if you had like another small recipe folio, you could probably tuck it in the front. So what I've done, and my titles on here, literally I was just kind of going, okay, what makes sense to everybody, not just to me. <laughs> so I have a Cricut file that I will share with this, with the titles already done for you. And there's some other ones in there other than what I've used here. Um, so we've got one for beef, we've got one for sweets, and I've just embellished them just ever so slightly with some of the um, tags from the collection that I have fussy cut and then matted on black cardstock and fussy cut again. Um, side dishes, crock pot and instant pot, which I use all the time. And my top one. So when you open this, there is a magnetic closure on here, but these are sized for eight and a half by 11 sheets of printer paper. Because as much as I'd like to tell you, oh yes, when I find new recipes, I write them down all neatly on cute little cards and put them in a cute album. Nah, I'm lazy. I don't do that. I literally print it off Pinterest. I try it from Pinterest from my phone. <laughs> if it's a good recipe, then I print it. And then they go in a binder in my kitchen. This will look much better than my nasty, ugly binder that they live in in my kitchen currently. So, um... So yes, so this is sized to fit eight and a half by 11, exactly as you're gonna print it off the internet. Um, each one of these pockets has a pocket on the back for smaller things that you've, you know, cut out of a magazine that you've, you know, picked up a recipe card at the grocery store, or um, I get Taste of Home subscription box like once a quarter, and there's always like five by seven recipe cards that um, come in that. So I've got somewhere to kind of tuck those away where they're not going to get lost. But really the way this is sized, um, you could put those smaller ones in here as well, and you're still going to be able to get to them. Each one of the envelopes has a three eighths of an inch gusset, which may sound small, but when you think about a three eighths of an inch stack of copy paper, that holds a ton of recipes. So literally this box will hold just a ton of stuff. Um, the envelopes go together really quickly. The box actually goes together much more quickly than you would think. There's my method of, of making boxes. There are no construction strips. If you have made the Easy Wrap album um, designed by Tammy from Country Craft Creations that I use on pretty much all of my albums, for the last year or so. If you can make that, you can make this box 100% easy peasy. So um, the tutorial will play next. As always, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. And if you want to get notifications, hit that little bell. And here we go. Okay, so we're gonna start with our recipe insert. So I've got all of them done except one. I'll do one with you. I have six total. Um, each of them opens up, has a three, three eighths of an inch gusset so that you can get a whole bunch in here. But a full eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper does fit in here. 
because I rarely do anything with my recipes other than just print them. So um, I don't typically rewrite them onto smaller cards or anything. About the only time I do that is if it's something I've created myself from scratch, that it's not I'm, that I'm following somebody's recipe. Um, I do have a magnet in here. To close this, you could absolutely use ribbon if you want to. And then on the back, we do have a pocket on each one of these, just for those smaller recipe cards if you do have them, or you know things you've pulled out of magazines or whatever that aren't the full 8.5 by 11, you've got somewhere you can kind of tuck those. So this, ultimately, is what it's going to look like. So let's go ahead and put this one together. I'm going to do the pocket first, just because all we're doing is just scoring and mitering and setting this one aside for right now. So your pocket <clears throat> is going to be 3 and 3 quarters by 11 and 1 quarter. With the 11 and 1 quarter at the top of the scoreboard, I'm going to score it half an inch, turn it, half an inch all the way down that long side, and then half an inch again. So there's my pocket. I'm going to go ahead and miter my top corners. and my bottom. And on my bottom, I just cut right through the middle of where those two score lines intersect on the bottom of that pocket. Okay, I set that one aside. The flap that closes the um, pocket is seven inches by 11 and one quarter. With the seven inches at the top of the scoreboard, you're gonna score this at five eighths of an inch, and then at one inch, okay? The front of the envelope is going to be 12 inches by six inches. With the six inch, or I'm sorry, the 12 inch at the stop, top of the scoreboard, you're gonna score at three eighths of an inch. I'm going to turn it all the way to the other side, three-eighths of an inch again. With the six-inch at the top, you're going to score at five-eighths, and then one inch. Oops. See, even doing it this way, I still can't get a straight score line. All right. The base is nine by 12, with the 12-inch at the top. We're going to score this at three eighths of an inch. Turn it all the way around, and then three eighths again. Okay. So before I go any further, so that I do not forget, I'm going to take my front envelope piece. I'm going to use my envelope punch board to notch this. I'm lining my score line up with the two inch mark on here. So if I don't do it now, I will completely forget. And let me tell you, it is not fun <laughs> to try to cut one of these out after this thing is assembled. In fact, it's almost impossible. So I'm actually just going to drop this in here. And cut out that piece. Okay. And then I'm going to take my scissors. So you've got, just bear, there we go. So you've got your two score lines here. So one inch and five eighths, and then your three eighths that runs this way. From the, half, the 5 eighths down to the bottom, I'm going to miter this just a little bit because this tab is going to tuck into the bottom of the pocket. And then I'm going to cut straight up this line and then straight over. Okay. Okay. Like so. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay. We're not going to miter these top because the way this is going to go together, it's not going to matter. Okay, this one is fine. 
However, I do want to mat a couple of things here before we get stuff assembled. And then I am actually going to miter the very top part of this flap just from the first score line, so the 5 8 score line up. All right, so I've got all of my matting cut for this. I just need to decide. Oh, I guess I didn't cut that one all the way. All right, so the pocket, the matting is 10 and 1 8 by 3 and what is it? 3 and a quarter? It's three and one eighth. I don't know. Let me grab it. Three and one eighth. So ten and one eighth by three and one eighth. And I am actually going to just go ahead. But what we need to decide is on the back of this envelope. Are we going to go this route? Or are we going to do it the other way? I think we're gonna do it this way. Okay, so in that case, I'm gonna put this side up. Maybe he wants to come out, which clearly it doesn't. just go ahead and put that mat on. Okay, set that one aside. I've got my flap and I'm actually going to round my corners on this one. This one we don't need to mat just yet because um, we have a magnet we need to put on here. And this you can lay flat enough to, to mat it after the fact that it's going to be okay. But we do want to attach this to our base before we get any further because we need to mat the back side of this before we get this whole thing assembled. Otherwise, again, it can be done. It's just not ideal. Okay, so I'm just lining this up from good side to side. Hang on to my glue. Okay. And it would be ideal if we mat the front of this before we put it on, but the way we're assembling this, we're not going to be able to just yet. So, that one's on. We can go ahead and put this down on the back. we did attach that flap to the outside that's why we want to go ahead and mat this now and actually we can go ahead and put the pocket on as well so I'm just folding my score lines on my pocket and if you do cut all the way through that where those lines intersect then when you fold this over these match up almost exactly, and you have less bulk in the pocket itself. Okay. And 
And because with these, you're matting as you go, it actually goes together really, really fast. Okay. Just burnish that down. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fold in my sides. And just my first score line on the bottom. So you've got the two score lines. We're just going to fold this first one. Okay. So here's our flap. Here's our other piece. And we can go ahead and fold the sides in on this as well. Because the way this is going to work, we've got this three eighth three eighth of an inch side on both of these pieces, okay? Those are what we're actually gonna glue together because that's gonna reinforce those. And they're gonna get further reinforced once we mat them. However, to get them lined up, you do have to kind of mess with them just a little bit. We're going to do these side pieces like this first. Because once we get it lined up, we can kind of push it over and down to get those good and burnish down together. And then this whole thing will stand back up. And then the other side should go down just as easily. Okay, so again, we're just going to kind of fold that flat to get those where they need to go. This one doesn't want to cooperate apparently because it's decided to pull up on me. And that happens sometimes. Not a big deal. I'll just go the other direction. So now, let's go ahead and get our first magnet down so that we can mat the front of this while it's still fairly easy to mat before we push that bottom piece in and glue it. So I'm going to put that right there. I have my piece cut. So because I did this on the back side, I'm going to do the opposite on the front. So I do have my matting cut. To do those notches on the matting, so when we when we um, when we notched the front of that pocket, we did it at two inches. You're just going to back up almost to the seven eighths of an inch right there to do the matting, assuming you decide to go ahead and notch your pockets. Obviously, you don't have to. Okay. Okay. there so I don't forget it because otherwise I will totally forget about it. Okay, so now we can go ahead just fold in our second little piece there and all we're going to do 
just tuck this in, push it down, get it lined up, make sure everything's lined up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put just a little bit of glue right here in the middle. Okay, it's all lined up where I want it. And then just very carefully stick my hand in here and burnish this down. Give it a minute for it to really stick. And while that's happening, I can go ahead. No, I can't do that yet. I'm put down this one strip. Okay. And then I'll come back and just very gently kind of poke my glue down in there. Again, put it face down. And one more time. Then you've got these little side pieces that are kind of hanging out here. All I did is take my scissors, just snip right to the score line, just right at the top of this pocket. Fold them out and then just cut them off. reason you're not doing this before you assemble it is just so you don't cut them too long or too short but you want to make sure you have the pocket assembled before you try to cut these pieces off there we go all right so now we can go ahead and fold gusset on this. Okay, get the backing off of the magnet here. Get this, make sure it's closed all the way, lined up. Don't push that down. Now we can go ahead and mat the inside here. So this is one of the matching solids that Tammy has put together for these. There are five different colors in each one of the solids packs. I think they're $4, $4.50, something like that. They're not, they're not super expensive. And they do match really, really well. Okay. I have my little quarter inch strip that I'm going to use in here. Just on that gusset, and you don't have to mat those gussets if you don't want to, at least on the inside. The outside, especially the top one, you will want to do that. And I do have those cut as well. I think I cut them. Yeah, I did. And because, like I said, you're matting these as you go, they go together really, really fast. Okay, I have it for the bottom and the sides as well. The matting for the back of this is 8 and 7 eighths by 11 and 1 eighth. Same for this, the inside that we're going to put in here in just a second. 
the gusset matting are just quarter of an inch because our gusset is three eighths. Okay. Yes, I'm going to go ahead and. Gee, I don't know if I want that one. I don't think I want that one. There we go. Here's my. I'm just going to go ahead and do the other gray. So eight, seven, eights. There you go. There is your pocket. Like I said, I made six. The box that they go in is sized for six of these. Um, if you want to adjust that, obviously you can. If you want to just do one of these as a standalone, you could. In fact, I might actually take my prototype one and mat it with some camping paper and get all of the recipes we use when we go camping and put them all in there together and put that out in our trailer because that would be really handy to have. I don't have to remember to try and screenshot them before we go camping and have no cell service. Um, okay, I'll be back in just a minute. All right, so the box. Because the box is big, this is going to be a little bit different than what you're used to. So the back of the box you need a piece of chipboard 11 and a half by 10 you're going to wrap this with a piece of cardstock that is 12 by 12. so because it's 11 and a half we're only going to have a quarter of an inch on each end that's going to wrap over so i have just put a quarter inch piece of score tape on each end we're still going to have our one inch border on the on this side and this side so i'm going to go ahead and put my pick and get my score tape backing off. And put this one down and we'll go ahead and wrap this one entirely because this is the back. And we'll be using our side pieces to um, to attach like you would the spine. I know what I'm trying to say. Sorry. It's been a long day. <laughs> and I'm just finally getting back in here. I had this most of the right way ready to go yesterday, day before yesterday. I don't know. One or the other. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'll just move this out of the way for a minute, is I'm going to go ahead and you don't have a whole lot that you're going to burnish down. I'm just folding it so that it's kind of ready to go because I am going to cut and I'm just going to eyeball because I'm not going to have that that folded line to cut on and cut out these corners So 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with my little bitty sides. And because I've got the score tape on here, I'm not going to mess with glue. It would be too hard to try to glue these. I need these to stick immediately. So all I'm going to do is just go along here with my bone folder and just work that up along the edge of that chipboard. And then I'm going to just fold it over and burnish it down. And because I've got the score tape on there, it should just go right down. Okay. Since this is all going to have other stuff on top of it, I'm not worried about that coming loose because this will come down on these sides. You're going to have other things that are going to be attached. It's not going to, it's not going to pose a problem. Okay. So again, burnishing, getting that standing up. Oops. And then I'm going to start in the middle. I'll just go down one end and down the other. Okay. So then for these two, we're just going to do these like we always do. If the glue wants to come out of the bottle, because that's always the key there. Again, I'm just going to my bone folder and over and down. Brush that down a little bit. Turn it around. We're going to do the other side. So now, so this is going to be our back, okay? Our front is going to be 11 and a half by 6. I've already gone ahead and trimmed my corners on this. We're going to do the exact same thing again. As soon as I forget where I lost my pick. out loud. This is not cooperating today. And I just had a temporary moment of panic thinking I didn't turn the camera on. <laughs> I opened up the software. Did I actually turn it on? Okay. down, do this other side. Just kind of screwed that side up, but because it's a box, nobody's gonna see it, so it's not gonna matter. All right, we gotta wrap our sides. And then we'll talk about our side pieces. So, why did I just do that? That was dumb. Getting ahead of myself. Like I said, it's been a long day. <laughs> Actually, we're okay, because I did that fairly fast. So somebody at the retreat, especially when I'm not like recording and at least trying to go a little bit slower, that I can build an entire album cover in about 10 minutes. because this method is so easy. Okay, so here's where I'm trying to decide 
which way we're going to do this. Okay, so this is our bottom. So we've got back, front, bottom. No, <laughs> like this. Back, front, bottom. <laughs> Again, it's been a long day, forgive me. Okay, so we're gonna assemble this part of it just like you would an album. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my score tape off on my two little short pieces. My score tape's hanging off the edge there, weird. I managed that. Okay. I think I tore that. I'm not sure, but it's okay, we'll fix it. Okay. Again on this end. All right, so now I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to burnish along my chipboard so that you get that definition, that line where the chipboard is. Okay? Okay, see what I mean? So now I'm going to take one of my pieces. And I'm going to do this just like we do with an album cover. So for now, pretend this is a spine and this is part of your cover. So we're just going to line that up, pull it across till you feel it slip off that edge, and then down. Okay. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to burnish again and I'm just kind of burnishing that bottom piece of chipboard well the chipboard that will be our bottom 11 and a half by 4 in case I didn't say that I apologize if I didn't um, so 11 and a half by 4 you're going to mat it by with a 12 by 6 the 11 and a half by 6 you're going to mat it with an 8 by 12 if I didn't say that I apologize it's because I've had this like ready to go sitting on my table for two days trying to figure out what my best approach was going to be for this. Okay, so there's our base. We need our sides. So for the sides, and I have one prepped and I have one we're going to do together. You're going to start with a piece of, car of chipboard that is four inches by ten inches. Okay, you're going to measure up on one side six inches and make a mark. From that mark, you're gonna to go to the opposite corner and you're gonna cut across at an angle, okay? So here we go, like this, all right? You're gonna save that little square piece because that's gonna be our part of our lid. Okay, so here's the piece that was cut out. This is gonna be part of our lid, so don't throw those away, just set them aside for right now. To mat these, I have a piece that is six by 12. And what I'm gonna do, and this is something you wanna pay attention to. You see how I have score tape on this side? Because I did it with them both facing the same direction when I put the score tape on, not thinking that one of them needed to be flipped the other way. Okay, so I have score tape all over this one. It's fine when I go to mat the inside of this. I'll just pull that off and use that for my mat. It's fine. Okay, so I'm gonna take my one inch spacers, okay, six by 12. So this is gonna be four by 10, starting at six inches, you're gonna cut up to that upper corner, okay? I just did that with, um, marked it with the ruler, did it with a craft knife and a ruler, and there we go. Okay, this wants to lift off. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna use my spacers and drop that down, okay? And then, if I can get a 
whole nother spacer. I'm going to line this up. Oh, it's going to be easier since I'm right-handed to turn it this way. I'm just going to use that one-inch spacer again, and I'm just going to mark across there. Okay. That piece, you can throw it in your trimmer. I'm just going to use scissors. I'm just going to cut down that line. What? Um, You're not playing Nintendo. Um, but I want to be done in day with days so I can touch that's fine. Okay. And then we are going to fold and burnish on all four sides, just like normal. Okay. However, what you're going to do here, okay, because we need to fold, we need these, these three flaps. Okay, so the right, the left, and the bottom. You do not want to fold those over, okay, like this. All I folded over here is this top part. However, before I did that, I took and I just kind of folded this over and lined up where my fold lines are to figure out where it was that I needed to trim across for this. Okay, so you're still going to have to kind of come in here and angle it a little bit more. It's not going to be exact and that's fine. You just don't want it hanging over this other side. Okay, on this one I'm just going to come straight in and then I'll figure out my angle there. I probably just cut that by too much, so I'm not actually going to pull that all the way off because I did cut that one too far. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and glue this flap down and my little piece where I cut it too far and screwed it up. It didn't get all the way off, which is good because that would have been an exposed little corner there. So I'm just going to stick some glue on, just fold it over. It's fine. Most everything can be fixed without completely tearing stuff apart and starting over. Okay, so this one, I'm just going to miter this just. Actually, I'm going to fold it and see. No, actually, that doesn't need mitered. That'll be fine. You're going to cut out your bottom corners just like normal. Okay. I'm going to make sure that they're mitered enough without being too mitered. All right, so now these need attached up here. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing I did on this piece. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm going to grab some water really quickly. I apologize. I don't know what is going on with the focus with this all of a sudden. The autofocus is turned off and it's still just is doing weird things. Okay, so we're going to burnish along the edge. Okay. So see where I burnished here and you can see that line and I haven't done it over here yet. So when I burnish on this side, now you can see where that line is, where the chipboard is. Okay, we're going to do that on all three pieces. All three sides. Pieces, sides, you know what I mean. Okay, we're going to do the same thing on this one. time. Okay. And all I'm going to do is we're going to line this up. It may be helpful to just fold that under temporarily. 
So the, the bottom of this is even with the bottom of this piece on the back, okay? Like so. And we're gonna glue it down. Mitered just a tiny bit more. So I'm sorry, I'm flipping these back and forth. It will just be much, much easier for me anyway to line this up if it's upside down. Okay. Now we're going to do the other side. Again, I'm going to get my glue. And I'm going to fold that bottom piece in temporarily. And this up right, that would help. So this is why I said it was easier to do upside down. <laughs> okay. Let that dry for just a second. For the bottom, I'm sorry, no, not the bottom. What am I doing? We did the bottom already. Sorry, I've gone through like three different ways in my head as far as how we were going to assemble this, so. I sound confused that's probably why okay so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna bring this up and over and glue those tabs and do the same thing on the opposite side I'm gonna start with the bottom okay and I am gonna do both of them at the same time not to get too crazy with the glue. And pull those up. And then. Okay. And then I am going to just push this up. I can get those down, make sure they're stuck. So as you can see, they're kind of standing up on me in there, which is fine, because we can fix it. Okay, once those are down, then we'll do glue on these front tabs right here and fold this up. But I want to give this a minute to stick, make sure everything dries. before I do. So I'm just going to hold it for a minute. I'm literally just pushing down on the sides to make sure that's going to hold. I'll turn it up. It still came apart on me. Of course it did. Because this is my night. This is how this is going to go tonight. I can just tell. Honestly, I would almost say get a piece of tape on there so that it grabs immediately because then you will not have the problem I am currently having. Okay. So again, I'm just gonna hold it for a minute. I have to cut a minute or two out of here so that you know you don't have to watch me sit here and just hold this for no reason. <laughs> Got a little bit more glue right up there on the top, but that's okay. Now we should be okay. Yep, now we're good. Okay. 
so. This is just going to come down. And I'm actually going to flip it face down. I'm going to come in here with my bone folder and burnish that down. Okay. you're lined up on your outside corners. We do have a little bit standing up here where it's kind of sticking up right there. I will trim that off in a minute after this has had a minute to dry. And I'm actually going to clip this and we'll work on our lid. So and hopefully this works. If not, you will just see the box with no lid. <laughs> so, in theory, I have two pieces, 11 and a half by 4. I'm going to mat those with two pieces, 12 by 6. We're going to do this the exact same way. So I'm going to take my quarter inch score tape, I'm going to put my one inch spacer in there, and then I am just going to run that quarter inch score tape out here on the edge. I'm actually going to turn this so that I can see that I'm all the way at the edge, I'm not in, pulling in some. Okay. All right. this on both of these. Just put that between those quarter inch pieces. Okay, there's one. There's our second one. And again, quarter inch score tape. score tape up against my spacer and there we go. So I'm going to set those aside for right now. We're going to look at our little corner piece. So I've done one. This is what it's going to look like at the end. So you've got your little corner that you cut off of that side piece. So this should be four by four by four by five and a half. Okay. I've got a four by six I'm sorry, six by six square. I'm going to use one inch spacers. And I did put the score tape on this before I cut this corner, this upper section off of these pieces. So that I didn't have to try to put score tape on something that was at a weird angle because I know how well that would have worked out for me, because <laughs> it's me. Okay. So, move the scoreboard. And again, we're just going to take that one inch spacer. We're going to draw a line. And we're going to get our scissors and cut that piece off. So, fold and burnish. Okay. 
And I sincerely hope my lid works this time because I did a version similar to this, or I attempted last year and it just didn't work for me. I am cutting this straight across because I think that's how I did this when I did my first one. So those are more of a normal corner, but that's okay. So I'm still going to have to get some more off of that. Yeah, it's a weird angle. I'm sure there's probably a better way to do this. I don't know what it is. It's fine. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to fold that end in. I'm going to leave the other end. Okay, so I'm going to get glue. And again, hopefully, when I did this, I did them opposing. I did. Thank goodness. Okay. So I wasn't too brain damaged yesterday. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. And just fold and fold. I'm going to cut. And again, you're just going to kind of eyeball it because you can't really bend that little quarter inch side. So. I have no idea what my son is over there watching. Might be Tom and Jerry. Okay. So, we're going to wrap these sides in like we did before. And then, one of these is going to go on each corner. Okay. And then we'll have our front piece that's going to come down. Actually, it'll be on this side. Okay. So let's start with getting this little tiny side up. Maybe. Okay, so again, we're going to burnish this up and over and down. Same thing on the other end. Okay, so this flap is going to attach to the back of the box. So we need this side, we need to wrap one side, or do we? No, we do not. Okay, this one's good as is. Okay, I'm going to take my little corner pieces, I'm going to burnish along the chipboard. I should have just done this the other night, but had stuff I needed to do. Okay, so that's going to go to the back. Okay, so these need to go with that long edge facing out, like so. Okay, so we're just going to glue these down just like we did, like it's a spine piece. Okay, we're just going to line that up that even. Brush it down. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay. This piece we are going to wrap all the way around. There we go. 
So let's cut out those little corners again. Short sides first. Again. Oops, let's not tear it. That's not good. It's okay. All right. And then we're going to go ahead and wrap both sides. This is our front. So I'm going to go ahead, actually, on both sides, I'm going to burnish. I should have done this before I attached them together, but that's okay. We can still do it. This one is like way pointy compared to the other. <laughs> okay. So again, the angled pieces face that way. This faces towards you. We're going to attach this here, and then we'll bring those other, after it's attached, we give it a minute to dry. Then we'll stand it up and bring those other two pieces in. So, just so I don't have to fight too much with this, I am actually going to put a little piece of score tape on each end here, just so that it will grab a little bit faster. Should have done that on the base, but that's okay. The other way I've done boxes, that has not been an issue, but this one, because of the size and because of the way we're doing it, it's a little bit different. So. Um, I had to improvise a little bit. Okay. So this is going to come up and in and down. Okay. That was much easier because we have that little bit of score tape just to help it grab immediately. Okay. So now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. right there but that's okay. I'll come up and in. Get everything lined up and brush down. 
Now for the moment of truth, assuming I did all of my measurements and everything correctly, we should off, be able to attach this like so. Our box should sit flush. And holy crap, I think it actually worked. I think I might have finally done it right this time. Okay. However, before we do that, I do need to trim that little piece off because it is actually impeding how I get this on here. Okay. Probably could have gone a little bit smaller, but it'll be okay. All right, so I'm going to lay this down. We're going to attach this just like we would with a spine, but we're going to do it from this view as opposed to face down like I normally would do it, okay? So that should line up. Okay. I think we're good. And again, because that will make it stick just a little bit faster. I'm actually going to do my score tape on this side. Okay. Moment of truth, here we go. Lay it on there, line it up side to side. There we go. Okay, that will close like so. A little bit of glue there. Up and there's your box. It worked. I'm excited. Okay, I'm gonna mat this, but like I said, this will open up like so. Your envelopes will sit in here just like so, and there you go. I'm gonna get this matted, do a little decorating, and that's it. There's your project. As always, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell if you want notifications when I upload new videos, and I'll see you guys next time.